All right, so this is our year in review. Um, it kind of just encapsulates some news headlines as to things that happened in 2023. And hopefully that'll be, you know, slightly interesting, ex especially whenever you look back um, in the future about, you know, what made the news this year versus next year or 2022. Um, in other news, TikTok is still not secure. Uh, the CEO testified in March 2023 before Congress, and basically this whole thing happened because TikTok is a Chinese-based company, and it has servers in China, and any servers that are in China or any data that's in China, the Chinese government can access it. So the U.S. deemed it a security concern enough to have him testify in Congress to get some answers. Uh, TikTok then proposed that it would improve security, but we are not exactly sure what that means. So basically anyone who uses TikTok, uh, as far as we know, their data, all the information they put into TikTok can be accessed by the Chinese government. Oof. Uh, Google was also in the courts. Uh, the DOJ brought a federal antitrust case against Google, primarily because of its over 87%, I believe, market share in search, um, which would definitely fall under antitrust. And one of the things that's kind of interesting is Google is maintaining that position partially because it's paying other companies. So it made... Um, a $20 billion deal with Apple to make Google the default search engine for Apple products. Um, I'm going to butcher the quote because I didn't write it down, but essentially an Apple spokesperson said uh, that there really isn't a better option anyway. So why not just partner with them? Um, but places like the EU um, frown on this more than the U.S., Uh, Meta, which you may remember it as just Facebook a few years ago, um, it got a $1.3 billion fine from the EU uh, because it, broke, it was breaching their privacy laws. Uh, and those laws essentially say EU citizens' data have to stay in the country or the locale in which they are residing. And Meta was transferring data to quote, U.S. Ireland's Data Protection Commission. I don't really know why this is a huge problem. They're transferring it to Ireland. They're not, you know, going to Russia or China or America with it. But that was enough to incur the $1.3 billion fine. Uh, just a quick, you know, tidbit about cybercrime in 2023. Um, the U.S. accounts for 46% of all attacks globally. What that means is not that the U.S. is sending out attacks. That means the U.S. is recipient of 46% of attacks globally. So we are a significant chunk. Almost half of the entire world's cyber crime is targeted towards the U.S. This number may not be 100% accurate, partially because some areas around the world do not report cybercrime. So this is a estimate at best. Uh, it's estimated that in 2023, U.S. citizens slash entities will lose an estimated 10 billion. So that's how much money is being made on those U.S. cyber attacks. The NCA and CISA say 47% of American adults have had personal data exposed. So anyone over the age of 18 has had basically has a 50% chance that some hacker or malicious entity has had access to their data. That's pretty scary. In fun news, uh, Dyson made this. Um, if you don't recognize it, uh, don't worry. I don't think anyone at Dyson wants to recognize it either. This is a speaker slash uh mask combo so it filters out air particles i don't know if they were 
super on the aesthetic of the COVID face mask wearing everywhere or what, but this is what they came up with. Um, it is expensive and apparently it does work well, but it works just as well as a N95 mask. Trains. Um, if everyone remembers the Ohio derailment uh, with our aging train infrastructure, another train thing happened, which I found far more compelling, which was 60,000 pounds of ammonium nitrate went missing on a rail shipment from Wyoming to California. This is a two week journey. And essentially what happened is the train cars were full in Wyoming. And when they got to California, they were empty. And no one seems to know really what happened. Um, someone from the train shipping company thinks that it may have leaked out, even though all the seals were still in place whenever they got to California. And in case you're wondering what ammonium nitrate is, um, do you remember Beirut, that huge explosion on the port a couple of years ago? Mm -hmm. um, yes. That was from ammonium nitrate. More than this, but uh, it's used in fertilizer and bombs are kind of the two big ones. Wow. Okay. But I just found it interesting that they just lost it. They looked in all of their computer records and they're like, nope, no idea where it went. <laughs> Tim, what's your gut feeling? Um, I think the one lady was correct that it leaked out. Um, partially because I think there would have been a bigger story if they had found it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, according to the train company um if it leaked out over a two-week period it shouldn't have any environmental impact which i think is just what that means is we're not really going to be sued for this um, i assume anything in that amount would have an environmental impact it's amazing amazing is right the cyber truck came out um, it came out about two years after it was supposed to. And to match that, it costs about $20,000 more than what it was supposed to as well. It has been described by critics as a guideless missile and as a death machine, um, which realistically doesn't do anything to make me not want it. That really seems just like a promo piece from an apocalyptic future hmm. and to be fair uh, elon is highly confident in the cyber truck safety and uh tesla vehicles in general score above um, the average for vehicle safety in part because of the autonomous kind of accident avoidant technologies they have in the cars themselves um there is a video of the front crash test of the Cybertruck and side impact crash of the Cybertruck. And it's kind of amusing because it seems like this thing uh, is not like the people inside don't seem to be in danger of stuff hitting it, but it looks like if it hits another car, that car might have some troubles because the thing is so just low to the ground and heavy. Mm -hmm. Kind of, but I mean, it it doesn't seem any more unsafe than another large American truck. So, you think you could? It's interesting. Could you put a plow on it? Oh, probably. <laughs> I mean, the plow is probably going to be like twelve thousand dollars, but okay, <laughs> someone would do it. Um, Apple, if you've noticed, if anyone bought the new iPhone, has changed. The charging cable on it, uh, now the charging cable is USB-C. Some of their other products had already been using USB-C. Uh, and I'm not sure how much of this has to do with the EU and how much of this has to do with just Apple moving along with the times. Mm. But basically, uh, the EU charged Apple of gatekeeping 
its charging cable, the lightning cable, um, and that they were going to start fining Apple in like 2024 or sorry, 2025, I think, if they hadn't complied with regulations of a standardized charger. Um, so either way, it's possible Apple is doing this anyway. Mm -hmm. But Apple now across the entire lineup, USB-C is here to stay for the foreseeable future. Another big thing that happened in 2023, and we've had a couple classes on it, is generative AI. So this can mean chat GPT. This can also mean uh, other LLMs like BARD or um, Claude. But the other way to think about it is the art that's been generated from AI. And basically it's just becoming pre a pretty big deal in 2023. Uh, but they also found out that AI can make mistakes, which is absolutely shocking to no one. On one hand, we have AI in the medical field, which passed the medical licensing exam with flying colors. And it also managed to diagnose a one in 100,000 condition in seconds. And on the other side, uh, someone tried to use AI as a lawyer for a legal filing and it cited non-existent cases that it just made up out of nowhere. So you still can't really trust it, but it's at least interesting. Um, so I looked at our notes a little bit and Peterborough Tech Classes, which Mary's in charge of keeping me on track. Uh, we had, to the best of my recollection, 20 tech classes in 2023. And we've had over 330 people take advantage of tech classes or tech drop-in, which I think is a pretty good number. I, it's fabulous. And it's all because you are an amazing translator of digital to all of us who grew up analog. So good on you. Well, I'm taking a really good stab at that by just reading headlines at the moment. <laughs> You're getting ready for vacation over here. And, and Tim, not only are you amazing, but you're interesting as well. I try. I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be, uh, I forget the word for it, but there's like, if you're rich, you're quirky. And if you're not rich, you're weird or something. I'm hoping to be quirky at some point in my life. We hope so too. <laughs> um. Yeah. What, Mary? I'm I'm just not sure I'm ready for a quirky Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll we'll take what we can get. Exactly. It'll happen at some point. Um, one of the fun laws or discussions about laws happened in Wyoming this year, where they tried to phase out sales of EVs by 2035 as opposed to the US government who wants to have more EV sales by 2035. And this was Bill SJ0004. And it died whenever people refused to vote on it, um, February 7th, 2023. The opening line of the bill says, whereas oil and gas production has long been one of Wyoming's proud and valued industries, um, and it goes on from there, basically saying they need to protect oil and gas production in Wyoming because it employs a whole bunch of people, which, you know, is probably true. But I don't think a sweeping ban on EVs really would have changed the massive direction the country is trying to move towards. Um, in slightly worrying news, uh, your Google accounts may be deleted now. Um, if you have not been active in two years, they will start to erase the data in accordance with their new security protocol. I believe this is partially um, an EU measure. Uh, there's a word for it. it. It's something like data erasure, but it's essentially trying to protect consumers um, from things they've forgotten that they've put online, companies with their data after two years of the customer not interacting with that company at all should delete their records of the consumer. So if you have a Google account that you haven't signed into in a while, you should probably sign into it. 
Um, if you sign into it today, you would then have an additional two years before you would have to worry about it again. Uh, Instagram Threads was launched in 2023. If you're not familiar with Instagram Threads, it is essentially Meta slash Facebook's take on Twitter. So as Twitter was hemorrhaging users after Elon bought it, um, Facebook slash Meta created Instagram Threads, which it, if you're at all familiar with Twitter, um, the interface looks remarkably similar but not similar enough to get a lawsuit. Mm. Uh, Neuralink, um, it's a real company started by Elon. And they re this year, they reached out to neurosurgery centers to try and start clinical trials. And if you're not sure what Neuralink is, it's, quote, creating a generalized brain interface to restore autonomy to those with unmet medical needs today and unlock human potential tomorrow. Basically what that means is they want to put wires directly in people's brains and have them be able to control stuff. So I feel like that's slightly worrying. Um, and PETA does not like Neuralink at all because of all the testing they've been doing. So Google search. Uh, what did people look at? Um, so I have the top three people and the top movie. So they, the most searched person for Google in 2023 was Damar Hamlin. If you're not sure what his name was, um, he was the football player who went into cardiac arrest and collapsed on the football field. Uh, this was earlier in the year. He's fine now. Uh, the number two is Jeremy Renner, uh, and he is the actor who played Hawkeye in the Marvel's films, and he was run over by a snowplow. He's fine. And number three is Travis Kelsey, and he has the distinction of being an NFL player, and he's also dating Taylor Swift. So he's fine. Uh, and number one for movies was Barbie. Number two was Oppenheimer. Questions. So uh, I'll just start this off with, has anyone seen any news in 2023 that made you excited, angry, interested, anything like that? Because I've basically listed all of mine. Well, I just saw something. It's not truly uh, digitally oriented, but it's Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos saying that there should be more humans in the world that it would be better for the world if we had more humans. I I respectfully disagree, but that's just me. I mean, I'm still waiting on their cage match. <laughs> Good idea. So what- um, if, if you're unaware, for those of you who are unaware, uh, Elon challenged um, Mark Zuckerberg to a cage match, an MMA cage match. Um, Mark Zuckerberg apparently in his free time trains in MMA as he finds it fun um, and nothing has come of it yet and nor will it ever because that is a incredibly expensive concussion if any one of them were to get hit in the head. So what kinds of new things um, have plagued or helped the, everyone who's joining us today? Is there something that stands out that you really have really enjoyed using or are frustrated by? All right, a short class. All right. Or a short period of me talking to people. <laughs> Well, thank you, Tim. It was a lot of fun to go through all of that. Um, I appreciate appreciate it. And as you you may know, if you saw the email that I sent out to our list, we are not going to be having uh, tech classes on uh, in January and February. Tim will continue to do tech drop in. 
but it, there won't be the Zoom option. It will just be an in-person situation. So, but thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Take care. <laughs>